Welcome and all aboard for episode 8 of the Last Caboose. We're sat here in Banff Station waiting for our first passenger train to arrive and pick up its guests. We've pushed this uh, end of steel past the edge of our confines of our map and uh, here we are. We're uh, just waiting. I'm just noticing that there's a palm tree on the far side of this uh, this uh, station here. It's uh, bothersome that that happens. Uh, again, if anybody knows why that is occurring, I have not used a tropical map or assets. It just seems that when I place towns, tropical things come in. Anyway, uh, this episode, we are uh, we're in bad shape financially. If I bring up the interface, uh, we're amounting to about $1.7 million in debt. Now, after the last episode, I let it play for a little bit. And uh, I don't even have the money to get rid of this. I can get rid of the uh, trees for free. So there we go. Um, but yeah, I I uh, played this uh, for a little bit longer after the last episode uh, to see where I would go with today's episode. I was hoping to expand on the main line, maybe get that coal and iron on. And I've realized that I've uh, put our company in some serious uh, financial trouble and I think the root of the problem uh, happens to be with my sidings. Now the way the game works uh, for us is trains, if we come down here we'll see a great example here shortly, uh, trains moving up the line and down the line cost 100% maintenance but when they're sat in a station waiting for logs or any freight to be filled, they cost us 40% of that maintenance cost. So we see savings of 60% on our trains when they uh, they sit still. Unfortunately, we have quite a bit of uh, waiting at these uh, these little passing loops, uh, and the only way to solve that is to double track the entire main line. Now that steps away from the reality of uh, the the lime west on the CPR uh, but unfortunately we're playing in tycoon mode and I will go bankrupt uh, there is no way I've played this scenario out several different ways but the only way to solve it is to double track so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna wait until this logging train here comes in and uh, basically makes us a good profit and then we're gonna take out the last of our loan and uh, we're going to double track this. So let's just speed this along right now and get this uh, this logging train into Canmore. Uh, it is unfortunate. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, I wanted to leave the bridges, but I think why not just do the entire, the entire route. Look, we've got a signal here that is two-way. There we go. We can do these kind of things for free, but it is very unfortunate. Uh, see, we've, we're sat here, we're waiting. This plank train, because it's waiting for the logging trains, is going out partially empty. Um, there are quite a few trickle-down effects, and now that train's not going to be making as much if we actually come down and click on this train and we look at its finances. It is now barely breaking even, where it used to be a huge profit for us. So it is, uh, it is unfortunate to say the least. So we're gonna wait until that logging train comes in. And I think at that point, we're gonna have enough money to pause it. And uh, we're gonna double track this line all the way from, Can or, uh, from Cochrane to Canmore. The last little bit we can wait on double tracking and save us a little bit of money. But I believe it'll take us about two to two and a half million dollars to, to complete the double tracking through the uh, through the mountains here. So yeah, it's uh, it happens to the best of us, and it happens to me. I'm certainly not the best of us. I'm learning as I play um, all the things that can go completely wrong. This is not just your everyday modeling uh, railroad. Uh, where costs don't matter, I could put it in no cost mode and, and choose to do a, a true recreation, 
but I chose to play the tycoon mode and I'm gonna hold true to that uh, through this I'm not gonna mess in sandbox give ourselves money or anything like that so uh, as soon as this guy comes in we're gonna see it there we go we can pause it now and I believe if we take out the last of our loan we are gonna go into deep financial debt to do this but I sure that this is the best way so if we just start working on double tracking the entire network here we are going to be fine now because I've added so many passing loops we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to kind of remove them and uh, see this guy this might be a prime example yes so we have the passing loop or double track on the opposite side so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring this back a little bit again being careful not to delete that water asset take our main track it used to be you know on the outside now it's going to be the inside track and then we're going to delete this back because we seem to we seem to lose the double tracking there and just go like this and now we are on the outside with this piece of the double track and if I can, we're going to do this in as big a chunks as possible. Uh, one day we will straighten out this line, but uh, today is not that day. Today we are just going to attempt to make our money. Now if I knew that this was going to be an issue, I would have done things differently in the first case, but that is... Uh, that is all part of playing the game is you make mistakes and you live with them and you uh, you adapt so as we come up here I'm still having problems with this uh, bears pod uh, reservoir uh, right beside us um, I have looked in I have found a couple of old maps that represent the old Bow River there but because of the scaling of the map and uh, everything else and the lack of uh, identifiable uh, landmarks um, like truly identifiable landmarks I really am just guessing grasping at straws of where the uh, the original riverbed uh, was so I think we're just gonna have to use some artistic license and uh, and deal with it that way so here we go we're gonna leave Kananaska siding completely alone. How are we doing? We've got two and a half million in the bank. Now, here, oh, we're lucky here. Look at that. Now, I hope this train's not sat on that junction. Oh, it just pushed one train ahead just slightly, but say la vie. That train's gonna Constantina. Let's see if it has. Oh, we just managed to get there. Okay, perfect. Now here, we're gonna have to take this piece back and around and what I think is we're gonna go to there and uh, we're going to use the outside track here to connect through. It's gonna create quite the cliff edge, but I think we're gonna come by later and fix that with some nice retaining walls and uh, that would solve that problem now. Once we're done all of this uh, double tracking, we're going to have to see what kind of problems I've created with uh, our lines. So that'll be quite interesting. Again, um, we are going to come in fairly steep here, so I think I'm going to take that back fairly far. Uh, I don't want to go too far because I don't want to waste too much of our money. Uh, we don't have too much of it left, and we are trying to trying to maximize our uh, our funds here uh, we're going to take this one I would like to delete it back a little bit further but that train is uh, is in the way I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to about here and we'll widen this curve and what we'll do is we'll take this all the way back and one more I might even take this piece back again 
trying to refrain from doing that as much as possible. And then we're going to oh, add the end of that and double track all the way past the Canmore station. And there we go. And if we can bring this smoothly into here, now this will seem strange right now, but it's simply a matter of making money. And then this one here, if we can remove that piece of track, it will be needless. And we will do our double slip switch special. And if we come down here, double slip switch that. And here, definitely we're gonna have to come back and solve a lot of uh, some issues. Right now we've got problems with the Bow Valley line and the Kananaskis uh, log haulage line. So let's signal this up uh, properly. We've got one-way signals in here. Um, I would like to add quite a bit of blocking, but uh, well, you know what, I've got the, the funds to right now. So we'll just go along, we'll add some blocking all the way throughout. I think here will be adequate. Right here where our previous passing loop was, that's perfect. And then we've got a signal here. We'll create a short block there just simply because it it saves us money placing one extra signal and at this point uh, we are all about trying to maximize that now here is where one of our issues lies if we can get this train off the track we are going to have some issues but what I'd like to do is bring that all the way back and if we could bring the tracks in and how far can we get? That's as fast as we can get, which is fine. And double slip switch that. And again, go back and we're gonna add a signal. And I want this signal here. We've got a signal over there that'll block the main line. I think we'll add another set of blocking signals there. We're going to maintain this signal and add that in to block. Uh, we will add another chunk of blocking signals here, here. Here's another short passing loop. So this will be a small block. Uh, when we go ahead and we have to upgrade our signals to the, uh, the light, the electronic signals, in the future we will rearrange all of our blocks um, basically what I'll do is I'll probably end up deleting all signals and start again uh, simply to uh, make this a more efficient network and by that point we will have added quite a bit and things like that so and I believe did we double slip switch this no and what We've got this one, it has a problem, it has no path. Uh, and it should have a path. Yeah, you know, it, it really should. So let's see, stop. Wait, no, can we flip you? Yep, it seems to have a path now. All right, so now that we're double tracked all the way up to Canmore, um, we should start to see this problem alleviate and we should start to see our income uh, grow again. Uh, that's kind of how I, uh, I've seen it work in my sandbox modes. So yeah, between every episode, I, I generally sandbox for about an hour or two and try and find out what's going on in the next episode uh, and plan out the history. And this one left me flustered because uh, obviously we have some huge issues. Uh, so I haven't really uh, planned out too much history. I think this is going to be a fairly short episode. 
uh, it's just amazing how one small decision, uh, such as creating just multiple passing loops, almost uh, bankrupted our company. So now we have these two trains, they're spending as little time on the main line as possible. Like if this train were waiting on the way back, it is not getting us money on the way back. It is simply taking empty carriages or empty wagons back to pick up money. And uh, as it's waiting on the way back, it's just costing us money. So hopefully the, this will fix the problem. We also have quite a high number of um, passengers here in Cochrane, and they're all going to Calgary. And it seems to me that uh, our passenger trains have kind of bunched up. Uh, they seem to be all three of them on one third of the map at a time. If we look, yeah, we've got another one coming here. I'm hoping they space out a little bit. So I am going to leave this uh, as a problem for a while and anticipate that the game is going to solve this issue for us. So now, one thing we could do is uh, we could get another train on and actually make use of the gap siding here and get to our uh, construction materials down to Cochrane. Now, this if we take this uh, Calgary pane and the Cochrane pane, we pin them both, you see that Cochrane is actually larger than Calgary because we were supplying it with more goods, more readily available uh, source of goods. We've got 100% growth uh, compared to 90%. Its target populations are both 106. So in the sense of realism, I would definitely prefer to um, to not bring those construction materials into Cochrane quite yet, um, just because I want Calgary to be the capital of the map. And uh, growing Cochrane further, although beneficial to our earnings, is not really what I want to do with this map. So, um, any other efficiencies that we could find, possibly we could start working on branch lines. Now, if you've noticed, I've paused the date again, and I'm going to leave that date paused just for a while until we make sure that we are going to be making money again. Um, it would be unfortunate to pass everything by. Um, well, while I was finishing off the last episode, I noticed we did have an upgrade to our... Um, one of our trains and I think why not take that and let's uh, let's modify all of these and if we go like this and we take our caboose or our engines off of all of them I would like to get the moguls on all of these I don't know if I'm gonna have the money so this mogul is uh, higher speed so 15 kilometers an hour faster more powerful and more tractive effort and its emissions are just slightly more um, it lasts a little longer and uh, I found with coloring this one I do like to color my locomotives black and steam era uh, there's no point in this one so let's modify those and now this line at least will run quite a bit quicker so let's take a peek at these new uh, new steam engines. Let's turn that down and uh, if we look at that, that is a nice, nice steam engine. So it kind of matches the train actually. It, uh, it does look quite good and that large cow catcher in the front uh, is liable to push off any animals that get in our way. Um, that was actually a very problematic uh, when crossing the prairies and especially in the mountains there were large bear and elk and deer populations and there were quite a few uh, wildlife strikes and up until this day actually the, uh, the railroad is known in the national parks of the Canadian Rockies as the meat maker and uh, it's not a, a nice title uh, whatsoever but what ends up happening is uh, grain from the grain trains heading west tends to pour out onto the track attracting animals and uh, and the train ends up hitting them and there's no stopping a train uh, so 
the perks have worked on multiple ways of how to dissuade this. The fencing, a fencing is not always the best option as it uh, splits the land. If you could imagine if the fence was here and there were a whole bunch of animals on this side looking to get to the river for water, they now have no access to that water. So fencing isn't the best. Uh, they have implemented underpasses and overpasses for animals. Those seem to be working. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, something that I'd like to look into. Now, back in the late 1800s when the railway did come across, the railway came across in three or four parties. So it started with the surveyors. So they had a general idea of where the, uh, the um, line was gonna go. And uh, then they surveyed, the surveyors would come and decide the actual grade of the track, uh, where the track was going to go, what bends, what heights, and they would they would pound stakes and they would move along the the countryside and pound these stakes, and behind them came the construction workers, and the construction workers would be supplied from be uh, behind um, with uh, steel ties, spikes and uh, they would place the ties, they would put the, set the track and they would spike the track and continue moving forward and that, that r end of steel would move by on the prairies four to six miles a day um, and in the mountains it significantly dropped due to trestling and bridging and things like that so uh, it was quite the operation but then after uh, the end of steel would pass by more construction crews would come and they would actually put up fencing uh, to keep wildlife off the track and more so as a land marker. Um, back in the late 1800s uh, there was still very dubious claims of land uh, and it wasn't all properly surveyed and the CPR, the Canadian Pacific Railway, owned quite a bit of land. It was granted to them from the Canadian government as concession for building the railway. And so part of that was fencing the land. And uh, so they fenced pretty much from Montreal all the way to Vancouver, any piece that could be fenced, uh, creating great division, especially in the, uh, the prairies as crossing Blackfoot land. In fact, at one point east of Calgary, the Blackfoot saw the railway coming through and putting the fences up, and uh, the Blackfoot decided that uh, this was not something that they, they particularly liked on their land, and they, uh, they told the crew to, to cease and desist, essentially, or they would pay for it in their blood, and the rail crew ignored them. And uh, back to uh, the character Father Lacombe, he was brought in to negotiate again and again remind the Blackfoot that this is inevitable. Um, and th th as they moved through the Blackfoot Reservation west of or east of Calgary, the uh, CPR did make concessions and did grant them land uh, elsewhere as the railway did eat up some of their reservations. So. It wasn't all uh, a take relationship with the natives, but I must say it was certainly heavily favored in the European settlers' um, hand, that is for sure. Um, so, not the nicest piece of history, of Canadian history, but it is history, and uh, we are uh, forever in the debt of many Native Americans. Uh, living on the land, especially the early European settlers uh, who didn't know how to overwinter these harsh winters or didn't know the uh, where the best water was or what water not to drink. And uh, the natives really, out of the kindness of their heart uh, and seeing the, I guess, trade opportunities and whatnot, helped these, uh, these people survive. So... There was a symbiotic relationship, but one that wasn't uh, wasn't really well dealt with by the European settlers. They definitely took advantage of the relationship. So, it looks like we are healthily out of debt now, and I think we can start repaying some of this loan. I would like to get it down fairly low, and uh, I think what we want to do is we want to start thinking about a branch line. And to think about a branch line, really what I want to do 
is pay off our loans in its entirety and create our freight yard here in Calgary. And if we create that freight yard here in Calgary, um, we will be able to branch nicely. I was thinking about doing the branch lines and then demolishing it and blah, blah, blah. But I think this, creating this freight yard is going to be instrumental in moving north and south from Calgary and moving freight in in a, in a most interesting way. Um, like I said, I'd like to have a freight yard here and a more minor freight yard here with a set of roundhouses uh, here in Calgary in the Ogden Yards where they actually would be and then a shunter train between these two yards or two and uh, just bringing planks and grain and food and tools back into this main freight yard to be switched off to all of the destinations that uh, that it's going to go whether that'll work or not is yet to be seen but uh, yeah so um, is there anything that we can start up not really we we would really like to get into these um, but I think there is no way we can uh, start delivering either of these into their um, into the steel mill as the steel mill is located north of Airdrie here and we need to create that branch line because uh, there's just no way I'm going to bring coal and iron in here and then truck it up five pieces at a time that road would be overloaded so I think to prepare for um, this in the next episode we're going to just wait until our uh, funds go a little higher and then I think we should build the uh, Cascade Creek Fire Road uh, it's a fire road, ah, fire road no, now, but at the time it was a road that serviced mines and uh, logging operations up Cascade Creek. And I think I'd like to bring it down to the head of Lake Minnewanka here, and then down through Two Jack and into Banff, where we will set up on the opposite side of uh, this, we will set up some uh, cargo station. Um, because in Banff we're going to drop off some goods, we're going to drop off some fuel, but we'd also like to pick up our iron from Banff. Now I don't think that this iron mine is going to stay here for the entire uh, the entire um, duration of this map, and I'll get on to explaining that, and it has very much to do with the date that we are here now, um, but I will explain that in future episodes. Uh, if we look off in the distance, we can see just the tip of what I think is Mount Assiniboine right here. Interesting, I hadn't noticed that yet, but yeah, I, I would believe that, that is Mount Assiniboine. If we, uh, if we follow this up, we are going into the Spray River uh, Valley here, and then this connects to here. This, um, this larger valley here, I'm trying to remember the name. Um, is it the shark? Uh, but it comes over here, comes up and over in Assiniboine Pass, and then into Lake Magog and Assiniboine right here. Uh, if you notice, the mountain is chopped off. Um, there is a max height for um, for mount or for mount uh, or mountains in Transport Fever 2. And so I believe that Assiniboine, which is the tallest mountain in, in the Canadian Rockies, uh, in the, the southern Canadian Rockies, uh, is probably, that's where it uh, is chopped off. It is the Matterhorn of the Rockies. Uh, there's <coughs> quite a few maps or, or uh, posters from the CPR exploiting the, uh, the beauty of Mount Assiniboine. Even though it was quite far off of the main line, uh, in 1925, um, the CPR, along with um, the Swiss guides of uh, the Banff National Park, built a lodge in there, and uh, they would actually have people come in on horse and uh, stay for summers, and then in the winters they would ski. Uh, it became really a, a tourist destination. But uh, anyway, I digress. Um, <coughs> Again, we're just still waiting on money. I'm really hoping that this uh, this double tracking of the main line is going to solve our issues. Where is our next money train to come in? We have these 
trains coming out. There's got to be a log train here. Yeah, this logging train's coming in to Cochrane. At that point, we should have enough money to start creating uh, creating our fire road. Now, speaking of fire roads, another circumstance that as the uh, the um, train or came through the uh, especially the deep forests of the Canadian Rockies one issue was fire it was uh, feared uh, obviously for good reason and uh, what they did uh, as they moved through the Rockies is they would usually clear-cut everything in and around to build trestles for um, ties for anything related to building of the railway they would need logs and they had a ready supply so a lot of times in actually 1886 if uh, you see historical photos of this area this entire valley had been clear-cut and leading to many many problems but one of the reasons they would clear-cut uh, and especially near their main line is for fire steam engines throw a lot of sparks especially when the older steam engines prior to 1915 uh, or 1905 when they were fueled by cordwood they would throw sparks like crazy and so the railroad made it a policy not to have any trees within 500 yards of their tracks so they uh, they definitely cut wide swaths just to make sure that uh, there was no chance of fire uh, fires often interrupted the line west on the Canadian Pacific Railway and uh, it was a great problem so it wasn't a problem that they just thought oh well we'll just you know appease the environmentalists there weren't environmentalists back then they there were um, it was all in the name of progress and industry uh, with very little eye to the future uh, with very little eye to the future, more out of ignorance than it was out of uh, sheer dislike for the Mother Earth. So uh, I think we're just going to come ahead, come along, and we are going to take those trees back from that line. And now we have a much cleaner line through the Rockies, and that is exactly how this would have looked. Um, now we could go along and we could do some smoothing and uh, go smoothly smoothly on a lot of these now that we can see them <clears throat> and we may in the future but again we are broke so I think let's get prepared let's start bringing our uh, our iron down into Banff via coach road and what we want to do is we want to keep this uh, fire road or uh, fire road as it's known now more of a a supply road and access road uh, fairly fairly tight as I said I wanted to come down and we want to meet with the end of Lake Minnewanka here and uh, bring it down past the two jack which is uh, now a camp site but was a former camp or a former logging camp and if we bring it through to Jack here onto this bench, if we can just work it all the way out and around and just work it down into the valley. Um, yeah, and now we've run out of money, so we're just waiting on our next big money train to come in. And I think that that's just how we're going to have to play for a little bit uh, as we expand this line. So again, we're going to be paused on that date for a little bit longer, but hopefully in the, uh, the coming months, let's just take a quick peek at our bank balance here. We are making money every year. As you can see, that one year where we had the passing loops, we did not do well at all. We only made 285k. Now, when I played that in sandbox mode, I was le we were losing about one to two million dollars uh, a year. And uh, it was not getting better. Uh, and so I cheated. I used some no cost and I double tracked it and I noticed that the finances came back. So sometimes 
you've got to uh, break a few eggs to make an omelette and unfortunately that that happened to be the case in this one so we're looking oh yeah we're looking for a money train to come in is there a plank train about to come in by the looks of it no what do we have oh we've got a plank train here now you can see our plank trains are much fuller um, because those logging trains are starting to meet demand now those logging trains if we can start looking at the rates uh, let's pull up the rate of let's see what you can see and let's get right down here if we can go to the Kananaskis log freight oh boy so yeah we're gonna pull up the rates if we go down here to the Kananaskis log freight we are uh, making a rate of 120 per year and that would give us 60 leg uh, log or uh, planks now if we look at our plank freight we're doing a rate of 144 so if we got 60 planks coming out of this 120 and our Cochrane log haulage is providing us with 116 which would be 58 so we've got 58 and 60 which gives us a hundred and eighteen and 144 is what's going out so we need to increase our log uh, our logging lines uh, to fill these trains up quite a bit more so if we can we will improve our uh, our log freight or can ask us log freight so let us see um, if we can go to manage the vehicles we go to both of them and we edit them what would be great is if we could put some cargo units on and we could add oops there we go I would like to add you onto the U and push you to the back and two onto you and push you to the back and that's going to be modified for 815,000 now we'll see what that does for rates so now these are even longer and uh, let's get an idea of how badly this thing is running where do we go? We go for running cost emissions. Power rating. Mediocre. Actually, not too bad. It's going to be 149 seconds or 1300 meters to full speed on a flat. And uh, this is generally going flat. A uh, little bit down when it's fully loaded. So I'm okay. Uh, two extra wagons on there. That seems to be perfectly adequate. Uh, hauling power I mean it would be nice to double head them and get them extremely long one day but uh, for the time being I think this will uh, suffice so that logging train is coming in nicely now and uh, our money is starting to crawl back up and uh, we'll go back to finishing off this, uh, this little bit of an access road that we've got here coming down into Banff and now we're going to bring it in and I think what we want to do is we want to cross right about here and a little bit maybe we'll go from here I mean ideally this looks like the perfect crossing right here does that give me a nice crossing? Is it nice and level? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And there we go. And uh, oh dear, what's happening here? There is a building in the middle of a road. I think we'll we'll have to get rid of that, won't we? It's an oddity. How many more palm trees can we find in this town? Uh, well, this one here, is it deletable or is it part of that asset? It's part of that asset, so 
Um, yeah, here's another one, part of that asset. Uh, must just be... Who knows? Frustrating though, absolutely frustrating. Here we are at the top of Tunnel Mountain. I think we can remove those two stray trees at the top of it. And uh, here is where the Bow River runs, Bow Falls. And I do have a treat uh, for everybody. Uh, we will be adding in an asset a little bit later on to do with the recreation of this area. So yeah, I think we are starting to make good money again. Um, get rid of the bulldozer before you do something rash. Uh, let's see, how are we looking at this? We've got 36 people. How many people are we leaving behind about? Five? Okay, we're fine. We're absolutely fine. Uh, how are we doing for people in Canmore? We've got eight people going to Cochrane. Uh, perfect. So I think we're doing quite well. And I think our next play is to save up a good amount of money. And I'm going to do that off screen for you. And we're going to get uh, a freight yard built here. And we're going to... Uh, start moving freight up to Airdrie down to Okotoks we're gonna move people between those and we're really gonna start uh, maximizing the use of this map so I think uh, for the time being we are in a good spot and we have saved ourselves so uh, what I would like to do is maybe pop back on to our newly uh, manicured line fire broken line uh, there we go let's take a peek we're gonna ride out on the very front uh, cow catcher or close to let's see if we're on that step yep and we're going to there we are take a ride back into Camor area and maybe through the gap and out into the uh, Morley Flats uh, for the end of this episode. It was a nice and short episode this uh, this time around, but we needed to get out of debt and need to explain that uh, when mistakes happen, it's uh, sometimes best to live with them and learn from them. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed our very short episode uh, solving some uh, insolvency problems and. Uh, until next time, we'll catch you. Have a great afternoon, morning, evening, and night.